Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. JD here again. Um, I was literally just putting together a video which I will um, do again for tomorrow, which was looking at a Mercedes E-Class Cabriolet after one of my nice viewers kindly suggested that we look at Mercedes rather than BMW for a change. So that is coming tomorrow. But what I discovered and what I kind of got my head around was that the spreadsheet wasn't quite as accurate as it could be as it could be so I will be sending out a new version of this to anybody who's already obtained a copy um, and a while ago in fact I, I myself had to watch one of my own videos to remind myself how APR is calculated and I'll put a link up to that here which I can never work out where to go it's somewhere up there um, and what was happening with the spreadsheet because most finance agreements that we look at tend to be fairly low interest rates, probably 4%, 5%, 6% APR. There is never that much of a difference between APR and interest rate. So when you look at a finance agreement, it will give you usually the APR and usually the interest rate. Now the interest rate that they quote and the interest rate that Excel I use a function in Excel in this spreadsheet called IPMT. So it, it's, it's, it's to do with, it's a function which basically calculates monthly interest for you. And that's what I use for the amortization table at the bottom. So you can see how much interest you're paying each month. But what that does, it actually works using the annual interest rate. So for example, if an agreement says 5% interest rate, but 5.4% APR, if you put 5.4% into the spreadsheet, it will slightly overread because the formula needs the annual rate, not the APR or the annual equivalent rate. Now, this is going to get complicated, so I suggest you watch that other video. So what I've done, I thought to myself, how can I make this more accurate? Certainly for higher APR figures. Now, essentially, the AER, the annual equivalent rate, or the APR, are based on a compounding monthly rate. So what happens is if you take your normal interest rate that's quoted, so not the APR on your agreement, your interest rate, to get to the annual equivalent rate, what you have to do is take that month, take that yearly annual figure, divide it by 12, and then raise that figure to the power of 12 to take into account the monthly compounding effect. I know this is a bit complicated that's why I myself had to go and watch one of my own videos so what was happening was that we were typing in an APR figure but Excel's function was using that APR figure as if it was the annual interest rate not the annual equivalent rate with the compounding effect so what I've done I've just updated the spreadsheet we're now on version 4 and what it does is you can type in the quoted APR figure off your agreement and then it will generate an approximate annual interest rate and then it bases its function on that figure not the APR figure and the why the the higher the APR that you're trying to work out the diff the greater the difference would have been so hopefully this new version will be more accurate I'll tell you why let me just show you this um, so this was the car that I'm going to be talking about on the next video um, and I just went on to Mercedes and just did a search for a, an E-Class Cabriolet and this came up 33423 lot and they are quoting um, you can see it on here let me just make sure you can see it. They're quoting, look, 12.3% APR, but 11.66 interest. And you see there's quite a wide difference between these two. As I said, if that was 2.3% APR, the interest rate would be 2.2. So it wouldn't have given you that wrong a result. But because I was unusually looking at agreement with quite a high APR, it highlighted the fact the fact to me that the spreadsheet was a little bit out. So actually, look, if we now type in the quoted APR figure on the spreadsheet of 12.3, behind the scenes, it will generate the actual interest rate of 11.66, which is actually, look, what Mercedes are also quoting. It then takes that figure 11.66 and uses that to calculate the amortization table and the monthly figure rather than the 12.3 here. All it's doing, yeah, for any of you 
people who are a bit nerdy like me and wants to know, want, wants to know the maths behind it. All it does is it takes that figure, it um, takes the twelfth root of that figure to get it into a monthly rate, and then it multiplies it back by twelve, and that's why the flat, not the flat, I don't mean flat, flat rate's a totally different thing altogether as well. Watch the video that I've previously put a link to that will explain flat rate as well. What this does is it takes a yearly interest rate figure. So it simply takes the monthly figure and multiplies it by 12 to get the interest rate figure. AAR, annual equivalent rate or APR, take the monthly interest rate figure and, and multiplies it to the power of 12 to get an annual equivalent rate, which takes into account compounding each month. The reason, by the way, that APR can be sometimes a little bit higher than AER is because, and it's not so prevalent these days, but a few years ago when you had quite high acceptance fees and quite high option to purchase fees, the APR takes into account the AR, the annual equivalent rate, plus any charges that are added on. So obviously the higher the charges, the greater the difference between APR and AER. This is getting really complicated, I apologise. Now in this case, because there's only a £10 activation fee, the APR is going to be marginally, marginally higher than the AER because there's hardly any additional charges. So that's why we can kind of work out APR simply by taking the annual rate, dividing it by 12 and then raising it to the power of 12 to get the APR. Anyway, very complicated. To cut a long story short, I've made a new spreadsheet and hopefully it's going to be a bit more accurate for anyone who's already got it from me. So uh, I'll be sending that out to everybody very shortly. Um, please comment and subscribe as usual. I hope you understood that because I didn't really. Um, but I hope it was useful. I'll see you tomorrow with the Mercedes E-Class video. Thanks for watching and take care.